The University of Maryland has placed football coach DJ Durkin on leave two months after offensive lineman Jordan McNair died from heat stroke. On Monday, the university's president, Wallace Lowe, addressed the media. Here's what he had to say. The university accepts legal and moral responsibility for the mistakes that our training staff made on that fateful workout day of May the 29th, which of course led subsequently to his death on June 13th. The statement came after an explosive ESPN report last week. It included vivid details of player mistreatment by Durkin and his staff, in particular strength and conditioning coach Rick Court. Court resigned on Monday. Joining me on set now to talk about it is Dennis Dodd. He is a national college football writer for CBS Sports. Dot com. Dennis, welcome. It's so great to have you here. What are some of the allegations here? What are, what are we talking about? Well, on May 29th, Jordan McNair, who you mentioned, the offensive lineman at Maryland, was taken to the hospital distressed after running sprints and died two weeks later. In the process, he had a liver transplant. There have been two reports come out that he died because of heat stroke. Now, there will be those that argue, Tanya, that no player should die because of heat stroke. Unfortunately, since 2000, uh, tw about 25 college football players have died of exertional stress, like heat stroke, like sickle cell trait. You don't see that in basketball. You right. don't see that in lacrosse. There's something fundamentally going on here with football. So what, what are some of the conditions that are lending themselves to this? Well, some of it is punitive training, and, mm -hmm. and that's what's being alleged at, at Maryland, where uh, Jordan McNair was, was hanging, was showing distress, and one of the trainers, one of the medical professionals, said drag his butt off the field. They did uh, say that. They did say that. That's quoted in the report from, from uh, ESPN. And then they waited an hour after he showed signs of distress before calling 911. So that in itself, that's med school stuff that you should know. What is the protocol then? I believe that you wrote a very interesting article um, advocating for the players, saying that they need to have a union. They need to be unionized, these college players. Well, this has happened too often. As I said, 25 deaths since the year 2000. It seems to be getting worse. Most of those deaths, Tanya, are in shorts and T-shirts. They have nothing to do with playing football. I call the, the area after January the killing season because that's a lot when this happens. It's happened too much for me that they need to organize. I'm not talking about a union where you pay dues or something, just a professional advocacy organization that they get proper medical care. Right, someone to stand up for the players, sort of, sort of a buffer zone exactly. between the coaching staff and the players. So what is happening in this specific case? What, what do we know what kind of punitive action the university is taking? Well, on Tuesday, the university had a press conference and basically admitted everything I told you, that yeah. there were you know, missteps in treating Jordan McNair, the strength coach, Rick Court, was basically fired, they said separated. And the latest news is there's a board of trustees meeting tomorrow which will address apparently the status of the president, Wallace Lowe, and the athletic director, Damon Evans. Now, D DJ Durkin, the coach for the moment, has been walled off on this. Maryland's gonna have to write a big, big check to Jordan McNair's family, most likely. We'll see what goes from here. Now, you spoke with Big Ten Commissioner Jim Delaney about this because, as you point out, this is not just a problem with college football. It's, it's a bigger problem, and it is affecting the sport. What did he have to say? Well, since 2011, basically starting with the Penn State scandal in Sandusky, there have been like 15, 16, 17 of these missteps athletically in the Big Ten Conference, and they're not alone. Other conferences have had this as well. They had four, co four coaches fired, not for win-loss, but for off-field incidents. For example, you have Maryland, you have Ohio State, that, that thing going on now. And Jim Delaney took ownership of that. But some of the other stuff, like Larry Nasser, like Jerry Sandusky, he said, reflects our society. We're doing everything we can, but some of that stuff, we are just a, a reflection of society. So in your expert opinion, as a journalist who covers this carefully, what would you like to see happen? I think more oversight. Mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, I, I don't want players necessarily to get paid, but they do have to be represented well. There's a reason that NFL players only average less than one padded practice per week during the regular season. They can collectively bargain that. There's no advocacy group for college players in that space. It's no doubt that it's a huge tragedy that Nair had to lose his life over this. Sure. Dennis, thank you so much for thank being you. with us today.